Hi, I'm Mrs. Pam Whitman, and this is my fifth grade class at Bridgeport Elementary. Today, we are measuring matter with Mr. Rick Crossland. Hey, thanks for that introduction. Okay, so today's lesson is measuring matter. Now, I like a lot of science, and the science I usually like to teach is things I can touch, feel, and see. We're gonna start with something that really, it's a theory, and it is actually how we explain the world, but these things are so small that sometimes we can't see them. So I'm gonna start with my famous joke. I hope you get it. At least pretend to laugh if you don't, okay? <laughs> Here's, maybe you've seen something like this before. You ever seen something that looks like this? It's like an atom, right? Yes. An atom? Yes. Well, I kind of like the name Adam. And so here's the problem with Adam. He's kind of sad. Why is he sad? I'll tell you why he's sad. Adam is sad because, um, that's terrible. Adam is sad because he doesn't know if he's a solid, a liquid, or a gas just doesn't know. Bada boom, that's the joke. You might get it. Well, if you get it, then you're a nerd. Okay, <laughs> but it's okay to be a science nerd. So, atoms and all matter, we're gonna talk about matter today, and we're gonna talk about matter can be, this is called a, a state of matter. A state of matter. And if I write it, what should you do? Right. You should write it on the back of your worksheet. <laughs> so a state of matter, so matter can be a solid, liquid, or gas. But my question is, what is matter? So let's take a closer look at matter. And here's what I, here's my two rules for matter. All right, you ready for this? Go ahead and write this. All matter, all matter, number one and number two. In fact, if we can answer these questions, then whatever object or substance we have is made of matter. Even though we may not be able to see it when it's really small. So I've invited the teacher back, Ms. Whitman, because I need a lovely helper. So Ms. Whitman, there's a famous television show, and you're thinking, what does this have to do with matter? Well, I'll tell you, the first rule for matter, all matter, and you guys write this, takes, up space and so who is the television personality what, what's the name of the show there's a round thing in it a wheel a wheel of a wheel of fortune wheel of fortune who is the beautiful assistant uh vanna white vanna. so and she always does what takes up space <laughs> so repeat after me miss women all matter all matter takes up space takes up space look at that very good you guys help me with this okay so let's take a closer look at you guys doing this all matter all matter takes up space takes up space very good vanna i mean mrs whitman <laughs> one more time all matter all matter takes up space very nice so all matter takes up space but my other rule is this, all matter. All matter, oh sorry, takes up space. <laughs> and, and it must, all matter has mass. Now here's the deal with that. My favorite guy is a guy, he's, maybe you know this guy, I look so much like him. <laughs> what, what's his name? Uh, Rick Croslin. Oh yes, thank you very much, but no, he's a muscle guy, He's an older guy. He's been a lot of. I'll be. I'll be back. Oh, he's a Terminator. Yeah. Okay. His name is Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, Arnold Schwarzenegger would say this. Are you ready? I'll say it, then you say it. Has mass. Has mass. I love that. Let's put it together, okay? Vanna White, Arnold Schwarzenegger. All matter. Repeat after me. All matter. All matter. Takes up space. Takes up space. And has mass. Has mass. Very good. Let's see how it looks like with you guys doing it. All matter. All matter. Takes up space. Takes up space. 
And has mass. And has mass. Oh, very good. Now let's this time all the boys be Vanna White. No. Yes. And all the girls be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Here we go. Ready? I'll lead the ladies. Ladies. I mean, I'll lead the, the gentlemen being Vanna White. So, boys, here we go. All matter. All matter. Takes up space. Takes up space. And has mass. And has Oh, I think that. No. What do you think about that? Oh, that's just terrible. Would you lead us again? Who would like to lead the girls in takes up space or the boys? Look, you lead the boys in takes up space, and who's going to lead the girls in has mass? Okay, ready? Go ahead. Good job, Jerry. What say? You say all matter takes up space. All matter. All matter. All matter. <laughs> takes up space. Takes, takes up space. And has mass. <laughs> no, that's not. Oh, but. my goodness. <laughs> but Cut. Make sure you write that on the back of your worksheet. Okay. All matter takes up space and has mass. Now, let's let's test that because in science, if I say something, don't just believe me because I say it. Let's put it to the test. So for example, here is a block of wood. So, let's see if that is made of matter by our two rules. First of all, does it take up space? Yes. Because I can't put my finger in it, right? Yeah. So it's occupying that space. Rule number one, check. Rule number two, does it have mass? No. Yes. yes. <laughs> it does That's have all... mass. Oh, In fact, yeah. we're going to measure its mass. You can feel it. It may not be much mass, but it does. Let's look at something like this. Here's some coffee. Oh, no. Oh, yes. The coffee. <laughs> uh, I put my finger in it, and it gets out of the way. It does take up space, and uh, right now it's it has a certain mass. Now it has less mass, hmm. and even less mass. So this coffee is made of matter. In fact, everything in this room that you can see, and let's let's ask some questions of you guys and see if you can help me with this. So pick an object in the room that has is made of matter and explain it to us. Something on your desk or something? Yes, sir. Go ahead. My chair. Uh, me? Yes. Me? Either one. Me. Oh, oh, chair. Uh, the chair. The chair. <laughs> explain my, it to my me. Chair. The table. And is the table what? What's the rule? The, the um. Living or living? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's hollow until you put stuff in there, and then it. When you put stuff in there, it has more mass. And so, but the table itself takes up space. You can't put your finger through it, right? And yeah. if you lift it up, go ahead. And if you lift it up, it has mass. Anybody else? Yes. You. Me. No. How about you instead? So let's let's take a look at you. Okay. So I found a subject, a substance, an object. Let's see if he has matter. Would you stand up on this chair, please? Okay. Uh, what's your name? Brayden. Brayden. Does Brayden? Take up space. Yes. Let's yes. find out. See if I put my finger through. No, no, I can't. Put my... <laughs> no, he does take up space. Now let's say, does he have mass? <laughs> Don't fall. So he does take up space and has mass. But there's other properties of matter. Just like this block, what else could we say about this block besides its volume and its mass? We could it's say height. its height. Braden has a certain height. We could measure his height. What else? Weight. His mass or his weight. Now in today's lesson, I want you to be a, uh, we're going to say the W word one more time. Say it and get rid of it. Weight. weight. In science, we like to use mass. And we're going to learn at the end of this lesson, and I hope you know this, the difference between weight, oh, I, don't, I said it again, and mass. Science word, we like. I like to use mass. We'll talk about that in a minute. So we can see his mass. What else can we say about Brayden? How old are you? His age. Uh, wait a minute. His, his liquid. His temperature. We know he's made out of solid. Maybe some liquids. And hopefully not too many gas. Oh, never mind. <laughs> that actually you have gas inside of you, all through you, in your blood, your lungs. So one other thing we could talk about him, we could describe his texture, kind of fuzzy on top, <laughs> smooth on the side. <laughs> we could describe his texture. We could say, is he magnetic? I don't know. We'll find out. Let's see. 
No, not magnet. <laughs> so we can look at a lot of different properties of matter. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at properties of matter and we're going to measure them. But before we do that, Braden, we have to come up with some units. Like we could say you're 11 years. We could say that you're 1.4 meters. We could say that you're 35 kilograms. But we need to know the units. Are you ready for that? All right, let's take a look at this. Okay, so on your worksheet, you have a chart similar to this. So let's take a look at some of these measurements. So first of all, here are three properties we're going to explore today. Mass, repeat after me. Mass, length, and volume. And I got some symbols for it, okay? And I want you to help me with this. Ready? If I say mass, I'm going to go like this. Everybody go like this. Mass. Wonder why? Wonder what that's for. We'll get back to it. If I say length, I'm going to go like this. Like a bow and arrow. Wonder why. And if I say volume, I'm going to go like this. Why? Touchdown. Touchdown. Well, I like how somebody thought it was a bow and arrow, somebody thought it was a touchdown, but no. In science, this is an instrument. What is that instrument? Scale. It's called a scale. A balance scale. Oh. Go ahead and write that. Balance Ooh. scale. Oh, and draw a picture of it. It looks kind of like this. Or a spring scale. And it's kind of like this. It's got a spring in it and a hook on the bottom of it. A spring scale. So if I do this, what property? What property? Uh, mass. mass. What instrument? A, a balance beam? A balance, no sir. I didn't say balance beam, I said balance. Scale. Class, I'm gonna ask that again. If I go to this, this is? Mass. Again? Mass. And what instrument? Balance scale. Balance scale, all right? Let's look at length. What do I use to measure length? Strings. Yes. A ruler. A ruler. And it looks like this. So if I do this, what property? A link. Link. What instrument? A ruler. And if I do this, what property? Mass. Mass. And what instrument? Scale. What kind of scale? Balance. Balance scale. All right. And that leaves volume. What? And I, here's what I use for volume. It's called a graduated cylinder. Cylinder. And a graduated cylinder looks like this. It's a cylinder with a base and some ticks on it. So follow me. If I do this, what is the property? Uh, uh, volume. Volume. Everybody say it. Volume. volume. And the instrument is? Uh, All right, I'm going to try it one more time with you. On the All right, what property does this show? Mass. mass. And what do you use to measure mass? Balance scale. scale. What property does this show? Length. Length. What do you use to measure length? Ruler. What property does this show? Volume. And what do you use to measure volume? Graduate cylinder. Okay, so you know the properties, you know the instrument or tool. It's time now to look at a system called, I call it, well, I used to call it the metric system, but the real way to say it is SI. And this is and you have to say it with a French accent. You guys have French accents? Yes. yes. Re we'll practice. Re repeat after me. I want a cheeseburger. I want a cheeseburger. No, a cheeseburger. A cheeseburger. No, a cheeseburger. A cheeseburger. Now, the reason I say that, although I admire people who can speak another language, the French are very important in science, and they came up with the System International. Say it. System International. We know it as the SI, and it also is known as the metric system. So, so when you order a cheeseburger, you will ask, I would like one kilogram of cheeseburger. I would like it to be 30 centimeters long. And I would like it to be a Slurpee of two liters, please. A Slurpee of two liters. Very, very right. techy. So I apologize to people who do speak French. I'm sorry. But I do like a cheeseburger. <laughs> All right. So here, why, why am I saying that? The units we're going to use for mass is called a G. Anybody know what the G stands for? Gram. Gram. Very good. So write gram here. In the System International, SI, in the System International, 
The length, what do we use? Uh, uh, an M, and what does an M stand for? Meters. Meter, very good, meter. And in System International, we use the meter, we use the gram. And finally, in volume, you may not know this one, but the L stands for, you get this in a large container. Liters. Liters, very good, liter. Everybody, let's re review. So mass, say it. Mass. Balance scale. Balance scale. The unit is grams. Grams. Length. Length. A ruler. A ruler. The unit is meter. The unit is meter. Volume. Volume. Graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinder. The unit is liter. liter. I'll give you a chance to do that. Okay. So what I love about this system is that it ha is it has to do with tens. And for me, tens are easy. 10, 20, 30, 10, 100, 1,000, 10, divided by 100, divided by 1,000. That's why we use this system. Even in a temperature thermometer, scientists like to use centigrade for 100. Let me show you the beauty of this system. Are you ready? Watch. So if we multiply a gram by 1,000, and the word kilo is a K, so you put a K there. So who can tell me what do you think a thousand grams is called? The, the abbreviation is KG. Who can say that? Kilogram. Kilogram. Write it. Kilo. Gram. Oh, while we're at it, if you're a meter, but there's a thousand of them, we call that a KM. What is that? Kilometer. What, what? Kilometer. Kilometer or click or kilometer. And if it's a liter, a thousand of them, a KL, what do we call that? What? Over? Kiloliter. Over? Kiloliter. Kiloliter. You guys are killing me. Come on. Enunciate. Or say cheeseburger. Either one. Lego. <laughs> All right, now look here. This is the one I really like. Check it out. This is if you divide by a hundred, if you divide by a hundred, it's called a centi. And I need you, I need some help. Here, tell me this. What do you, if you take a dollar, and you divide it by, oh, if you take a dollar and you divide it by a hundred, what do we call those things? Oh, oh, oh I didn't divide that by a hundred. <laughs> if you have a dollar and you divide it by a hundred, what do you call? Anybody? Yes? Pennies, but pennies doesn't match. We also call them something else. There's a hundred of these in this. What is it? A hundred cents. The word cents, C-E-N-T-S, means a hundred and a dollar. You can have that dollar. It's slightly damaged. Oh, what? <laughs> so, a hundred, if we divide something by a hundred, if we divide something by a hundred, we call it a centa, which is C. So, tell me this. You take a gram, you divide it by a hundred, it's a CG. What is that? Centigram. Right. If you take... A meter, and you divide it by 100, it's centimeter. A CM, what is that? Centimeter. Centimeter. If you take a liter, divide it by 100, what's that? Centiliter. Centiliter. We're starting to you see a pattern? Yeah. You see a pattern? Let's do one more. Centa, divide by 100. Kilo times 1,000. Now we get to one of my favorites, which is milla. Milla. I have a tie that has a 1,000 little flowers on it. It's called a... Millaflore. Millaflore. Milla means what? A thousand. And flora means what? Flowers. Maybe you have a, a, a vase at home or a glass at home with a lot of little flowers in it. We call that milla flower. Now, why do I tell you that? Because it helps me remember that milla means like a thousand little things. So it's M. So what is an MG? Anybody? Milligram. Milligram. Did you get that? Say it. Millimeter. And what do you think is a MM? -M? Millimeter. Millimeter. And what do you think is a ML? Milliliter. 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 This morning I took a vitamin and it was 40. What my vitamin was it 40 kilograms? No. That would be that'd be about that big. <laughs> was it 40 grams? No. That'd be like that big. The the vitamin I took this morning was 40. Milligrams, real little. I took a drink of coffee this morning. That coffee, I'll show you. This drink of coffee I take. Hmm. Do you think that I just took one kiloliter of drink? 
A thousand? No. You think I just took one liter? Yes. A liter? Remember, two liter bottles that big? No. No. I probably just took a centiliter or mm, ten milliliters, maybe. So we need to know these. Go ahead and finish this on your chart. Yes. Can the sun have mass? The sun does have mass. What a great question. Because you know why? What's the sun made out of? But it's also made out of matter. And what does all matter do? Takes up and has mass. So you answered your own question. Okay, so we've got a pretty good understanding of properties of matter and the different instruments we're going to use and the different units. So today in our lesson and from now on, if you say, oh, it's seven, I'm going to say seven what? Seven bananas, seven centimeters, seven liters, seven kilograms. So it's, it's just as important to have the, the number and the unit. Without those together, we won't have any measurement. Are you ready to do some measuring up close? Well, let's take a closer look. All right, so here's what, you're, what you are going to do. We have a lot of instruments. Let's just review these for a second. So what does this look like? A balanced scale. A balanced scale. And what property does it measure? Mass. 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 Excellent. Now, I also brought this balanced scale. It's a little bit different. Some balanced scales are more sophisticated. And this one, what you do on both of these is you put a known object, like this wood block, on one pan. Thank you. Or on this pan right here. This one gets a bit tricky because this one's better, but we'll leave them all in here for you. So if I put this on here, see how it's balanced in the middle? Yes, yes? When I put this on here, it's heavier, so what is it going to do? It's going to go the other way. So on both of these type, we have to put a known mass. And so I have some of these right here. And so here's one. What does that say? Can you read that, Brandon, on the top of it? It says... It's Braden. Braden. Anybody? I think it says 50 G. What does that stand for? 50 grams. So if I put this here on this side. Oh, so that block of wood must be what? 40. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, man, that's too much. Is it, is it? It's too much. So I have to take that one off. So I have to. So that block of wood is probably not what? 50 grams. It's not 50 grams. It must be. Here is a 20. Nothing. Here is a 10. So what does that make it? 30. 30. Nothing. Nothing. Here's another 10. What does that make it? 40. 40. Do I see anything going to happen in here? There's a bit of slight movement. Slight movement. There's 40. There's Here's like 5. What do you think? 50. 50. 40. 45. Oh. Here's a 1 gram. 46. I knew it. What do you think? 46? Or, no, it's not exactly. Not, not exactly? 47. Here, here's a 2, so that makes it... Yeah, it is 48. 48. It's exactly. Hmm, let's see. I'm not sure. That's too much. Let's take away the 1 and see what happens. It's even. It's even. 47. 40. So the mass of this is what? 47, 47 grams. grams. Thank you for saying grams. Now, there's another way we could have done it. We could have done it on this guy right here. Let's move this out of the way. And I want you to do all of this. So we put it here. And instead of using these grams, we get to use my favorite thing in the whole world. Not really. <laughs> but today, this one. What? Grams. No. Centigrams. No. Centigrams. No. You're killing me. No, listen. You know what this is? I'm going to let you in on a secret of the universe. Are you ready? This is a super duper all purpose measuring device. <laughs> oh, yeah, you taught us that before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that last year. And did you believe me in third grade? Yes. 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 Then it's still true. Everybody repeat it after me. This is. This is a super duper, duper all purpose, all purpose measuring device. Measuring device. <laughs> because, because it weighs one gram. So if I put it here, it's a gram, one gram, two grams. How many grams are we going to put here? 47, right? Yeah, because it's 47 grams. That's the whole bag. That's maybe the whole bag. So there's like 47. That's not enough. So maybe the whole bag. <laughs> so let's see. If, let's put the whole bag in there and see if that's 47. Ready? Way more. Way more. So this is a gram. 
super duper all-purpose measuring device. Oh, guess what? What if I wanted to measure the length of this? I could use, what would I use? A ruler. What would be the units then? Centimeters. Now, they try to trick you, kids, and I'm going to try to trick you too. If most rulers, you got to figure out where they start. Like this one right here, there's nothing there, but that should be zero. One's right here. So if you put it here, you can read that how many centimeters is it? A little bit more than what? 12? Are you seven, killing, you're killing seven, me. 7 grams. 7 grams. 7 grams. 7 grams. 7 grams. 7 grams. You said 7 grams. Go to the corner. I said 7 grams. Go to the corner. I'll go to the corner. We got a lot of corners here. Watch out. <laughs> I'll give you one more chance. What is this? 7 what? 7 centimeters. Millimeters. There's another corner. Go to the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a bit of Look here. See these little bit, look. See these little bitty things. Ding 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 ding. Those. And this is good. You said that. Those are millimeters. So seven centimeters is the same thing as seventy millimeters. Wow. Mind blown. He's <laughs> like. Did you see what I just said? Seven centimeters, boys. Seven centimeters is the same thing as 70 milliliters. All right, but here, remember I told you, hold this, Braden. Okay, here's what I was telling you. This, my friend, is the super duper all purpose measuring device because I can line up seven of these because they just happen to be, guess what? One gram. One gram and one, one, centimeter. one centimeter. So we could use these as gram cubes or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's why I love it. Super duper all purpose measuring device. So we can use it for grams or we can use it for length, mass or length. Ah, but there's more. There's more. In fact, volume. Thank you. May I see your block right there? There is a secret formula that kids are not allowed to know, but I'm going to tell it to you. Read what this says. Length times length times height. You can't tell that to anybody. We learned that in math. What? Yeah. Come here, young man. <laughs> what did you just say? We learned that in math. I'm sorry, say it louder and come we learned closer. That in math. Show the camera your face because that's amazing. Come Come here, tip in. Get over here. He says they learned this in math. And uh, we need to have evidence of that. Get over here. What's your name? Ashla. Ashla, look in there and say that. We learned it. We learned this in math. Huh. You know what? <laughs> Math is the language of science. And so this is the secret formula. Volume equals length, height, 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 height. And we measure that in cubes. So you know what you could do today? You could put seven of these this way, seven, 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 seven. And how many of these cubes would it take, do you think, to make this block? Three. It's seven by three by three. What's three times three? Nine. What's nine times seven? Sixty-three. The volume of this would be sixty-three cubes, cubic centimeters. Yes, you were right, and you were right. You learned it in math because math is the language of science. So, what I would say, this is a centimeter cube, one cubic centimeter, or one milliliter of water, or one centimeter, or one gram. But the best thing to say about this, it is a Super duper all-purpose measuring device. All right, so you're going to explore this on your own in just a minute. That also we have a spring scale. Now the spring scale is cool because it has a hook and a brown 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 spring. Okay, got that? So here's the big difference between this and this. This measures mass. We put an object here. We put masses here. If this is the same. If I took this to the moon and laid it down, it would work. If I took it to Jupiter, I couldn't land on Jupiter as a gas giant, but it would work for a few minutes. If I took it anywhere in the universe, this should work. But a spring scale has to do with force of gravity. So when I hook something on this, yes, you should take the video. if I hook something on this, like this piece of clay right here, and I got a plastic bags for you. It goes down and I can find out its weight. When you use a spring, we measure weight. You got that? Yes, yes? Yes, yes. yes. Because this is measuring a force of gravity. So here's the hard question. If the gravity is more where you're at, 
Will the weight be more or less or the same? Same. 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 More. 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 If the gravity is less, It'll be less. 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 So on the moon, on the earth, this has a certain weight. On the moon, there's less gravity, so zzz, it'd be up. On Jupiter, a gas giant, zzz, much bigger. So weight has to do with the force of gravity. And since gravity is different on larger objects, weight changes in the universe. Mass does not. Lock that in your brain. So gravity and weight go together. Mass is a constant, we hope. <laughs> so here's one. So we're going to do these experiments. And our last experiment we're going to do, let's move this out of the way. Oh, let me show you this. Open that up for me. Hand me some of those right there. So this was like 47 grams, right? Look at this here. This is a large, this is 200 grams. Give me another one. This one is 200 grams. So how many grams do I have now? Four, give me another one. There's 400 grams. Oh, it's starting to get out. Here's another two. That's 600 grams. Give me another one. 800 grams. Am I at a kilo yet? No. No. There's 800. What do I have to do to get to a kilo? One more. Kilogram. All right. There's 800. Give me another big one. What is that? No. How about that uh, mass right there? That one. I'm at 800. What's this one say? What does it say? 100. 900. I need another one. Oh, yeah, because kilos are. What's a kilo? That is a kilogram of mass. That's one kilogram. It's kind of heavy. I'll let you mess with that a little bit later. All right, let's try one more thing. Ready? To set this up, let's find, let's find the volume using a graduated cylinder. Put that over there, please. And this over here. Now, this is a regular solid. We know it has a what? Length times width times height. This is easy to figure. We can measure this and find its volume. But what if you have a rock? It's hard because it's not an actual shape. It's an actual shape, but it's not a regular shape, right? It's not it's it's a regular. It's an irregular. It's a what? Irregular. It's an irregular shape. You heard it right there. Irregular shape. So here's how we can figure this out. Oh, I'm going to try to trick you on this one though. So this is volume. We're going to use a what? Cylinder. And what's our units going to be in? Like Milla. Milliliters. All right. So right now, how much? How many milliliters of water is in here? Sixty. Sixty. Here's the hard question. When I drop this in here, is the water going to stay the same? This is made of matter. All matter does what? Takes up space. And takes up space. So if I drop this in here, the what's going to happen? It's going to go up. It's, it's going to go higher. It's going to go higher because it it's takes like up space. space. All right, so that's 60 milliliters. Who predicts when I drop this in here what it's going to be? It's, it's going to go down. down. It's, going to go it's going to go down. The it's rock's going to go down. It's going to stay the same. I think it's going to go down. I think it's going to go down. Well, here's the deal. I want you guys to do this. Let's let's try it. Show me with your thumb if the water's going to go up, stay the same, or go down. Predict. Okay, all right, let's test it. Here we go. It's at 60, right? Let's watch. It's at 60. Can you see that? Here it goes. It can go up. Oh, what did I say? What did it do? Oh, what is it? Oh. What is it? What's the, what's the number? Read it for me. I can't. 62. 62 what? Bananas? Cinnamon. No, milliliters. 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 62 milliliters. So here's the hard question. I'm hoping I'll trick you with it. It was at 60, it's 62 milliliters now. What is the volume of that rock? Raise your hand. Tick, 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 tick. What's the volume of that rock? Two Oh, I tried to trick her. She said what? Two milliliters. Two milliliters. I thought she would say 62 milliliters. <laughs> I can't trick kids anymore. You're too smart for me. So it's at 62. So now what happens when I put this rock in? What do you think it's going to go up to? It's going to go up to 64. You think? All right, no, here we go. No, that's not heavy. Not way. Volume. Oh, here we go. Not heavy. Not heavy. We're not talking about mass. We're talking about volume, size. It's going to go up. Let's go. Ready? Now what is it? 65. 65. It was? 62. 62. 62. It's one three. 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 What is the volume? 65. Say it again. Three milliliters. You're killing me. You're always getting it right. Okay, here's a weird one. Now it's at 63. I know it's at 65, right? Yeah. What do you think that's going to do? 62. 66. Two what? Bananas? No, milliliters. All right, so if it's at 65, what do you predict it'll go to? 67. I agree with 
I go. I think it's gonna be um seventy. Seven. You think this is gonna go from sixty five? That was even I mean, seven, seven. Six. I'll tell you what. I'm not gonna do this, but you have all the stuff to do these experiments, and in your book there's experiments. For example, what if I wanted to see what? Uh, check this out. What if I wanted to see what twenty? 20 milliliters of air look like. Blow, Blow into it. You do it. Come here. It's at 60. And not yet. Now, slow. Oh! <laughs> he said slow. Yeah, let's get it. See if you blow and we can get it. That's amazing. And so now we can make it go up. Okay, that's great. <laughs> he added some gas to it. Hey, why don't we go back to our seats and See if you can find, look on your worksheet, the length, the width, the height, the mass, the volume of your matter. Two, three, four, five. Five what? Six. Grams. Grams, thank you. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It's ten. rocks. So what's the mass of those two rocks? Ten. Ten. Grams? Ten what? Grams. Ten grams. Good job. Six, Sixty-three what? Very good. Very good. What are you counting? What are you counting? See how many uh on the rock? How many? What's the unit? Those are one gram. What? Gram. You're right. So we learned a lot today about measuring matter, and that you know, and we're going to review that. Uh, Miss Whitman has some uh, final words to say, but I don't. Don't forget, go to your library here at Bridgeport. We have some really good books like Inside Matter. Solids, gases, and liquids. Sleep on a bed of bubbles? Or even experiments with solids, liquid, and gases. Remember, Adam is sad because he doesn't know if he is a solid, liquid, or gas. Hey, uh, Ms. Whitman, what did we learn? Excellent. And one more time. Uh, this way. Yes. All matter takes up space and has mass. Hi, my name is Michael Guesswine, and I was the videotaper for Mr. Crosland during this production. Weren't you forced to do it? Uh, no, I volunteered. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Mike. <laughs>